polling station layout. This is the table for information officer who will direct electors into the polling station. This is the table of the presiding officer, manager of the station, in charge of all operations. This is the table for the poll clerks, green line and red line poll clerk. Elector proceeds to the deputy presiding officer's desk where a ballot paper will be issued to them. They will then go to the voting booth, mark the X, fold the ballot paper, comes, back, comes to the table of the officer in charge of the ballot box, immerse the finger into the ink before they insert the ballot into the box. The poll card will be inserted by the officer in charge of the ballot box. And they will be thanked for their time. Polling agents, this is the desk, and they are there to ensure that the electoral procedures are in place. Okay, so the first inspection would have been done at 5.45, where the seals from the poll card box would have been broken at the slot, as well as from the lock and the contents would have been emptied and placed on the presiding officer's desk and other respectful desks. At that time, because of it being the first inspection, it must be recorded in this very important book called the polling station diary that would have been signed by the presiding officer on the cover first and on the inside of it, the other information will be given on the cover as well and the first inspection which is on the first yellow page has to be recorded and everybody that is present at the polling station has to sign as witnesses as well as the officer in charge on that day so after that the second inspection which will be done at 555 is the breaking of the seals of the ballot box and emptying of the contents of the ballot box and relocking the ballot box. So, give her the keys. So she's now going to open the ballot box that would have been locked and sealed. In there are the ballots that are supposed to be used during the day. We're gonna pretend this is the ballots, <laughs> All right? We're gonna take it out, put it on the desk, show that the, bo the box is empty no ballots in there to everyone, right? Okay, so after the second inspection has been completed, the entry will be made into the polling station diary on the second page, where all the members of staff, which are the polling station staff, poll day staff, will be allowed to sign the polling station diary, as well as any agents that are present. As long as agents are present, you will not need to invite any elector that's waiting on the outside in case there's one out there at that point in time to be part of the witnessing of the second inspection. So if the agents are present, there's no need for the elector. If there are no agents present at all, then you can invite the first elector that's there at that point in time on the inside of the polling station to be part of the second inspection witness and signing inside of the polling station diary. At this time, I will ask all members in the polling station to put the same time as myself, which is 6 a.m. So everyone will synchronize their watches. So we will have the same time. Then I'll proceed to declare polls are open by saying, okay, everyone, polls are declared open. I will now ask all the members that are in the polling station to sign in the polling station diary as witnesses to the opening of the polls. This is very important. This procedure of opening of the polls must be entered in the polling station diary on the first page. So I must put the time, the words opening of the poll, 
and I will initial or sign next to it, and the other witnesses, which are the other persons within the polling station, will now come and affirm, affix their signature on each line consecutively coming down in the polling station diary. This is the table of the information officer. The elector goes to her, hands over her poll card and ID card. Information officer now checking for her name on the list of electors. She finds it, directs the elector to her correct polling station. We have an elector proceeding to the green, green line poll clerk. She hands her poll card and ID card to the Green Line poll clerk. The clerk checks for her name on the list. She checks for her ID card against the reference list. She assigns a number from the book of consecutive numbers to the elector. She records this number against the elector's name on the list. And also on the poll card. The consecutive number assigned to the elector is crossed out on the book of consecutive numbers by marking an X. The elector is asked to sign her poll card. The, the poll clerk initials the poll card. She is directed to the deputy presiding officer. She hands her poll card and ID card to the officer. The officer compares her face on the ID with the, with the elector standing before her. She takes the poll card. She initials the poll card, return it to the elector. She's now examining the elector's fingers for ink stains. She's asking whether she knows how to vote. And now using the guidance ballot, she's explaining her how to use the X stamp. She's showing her, using the same guidance ballot, as to how to fold her ballot paper. She's indicating that her initials must be seen when folded. She's telling the elector that she must fold it in the way that she has done in the voting booth. She goes to the book of ballot papers and is now entering the consecutive number assigned to her as well as the number of the elector on the voters list. She is now initialing at the back of the ballot paper. 
she is creasing along the perforated line to detach the ballot paper. She does so. She hands the ballot paper to the elector. She has asked her to leave her cell phone in the receptacle and direct her to the voting booth. proceeds to the desk of the officer in charge of the ballot box. She shows her the ballot paper with her the DPO's the initial as well as the polling station number. She asks her for the poll card and instructs her to hold the ballot in her left hand. From the poll card she is going to Use the consecutive number given, write it on the revised list of electors. She asks to immerse the elector to immerse her right index finger in the ink and wipes with the tissue provided. The elector is now allowed to insert her ballot into the box. She thanks the elector. The officer would now, in red ink, cross the elector's name, writes a V to the end in red ink, indicate on the poll card that the elector has voted. Now place the poll card into the poll card box. The elector proceeds to the red line poll clerk. The elector does not have an ID nor poll card. She states her name as Mrs. Simi Cherku. That name is checked for on the list of electors. Not seen, the clerk goes to the unit registered, checks for her registration record. It's not there. She then asks the elector if she has another name. The name is given as Simi Singh. She says she, that is her maiden name. A check on the list is done again. It is found. She goes to the unit register to compare the elector's face with, with what is on the registration record. And it is Simi Singh. She now gives the elector the consecutive number, which she calls out aloud. Writes that number against the elector's name on the list. An affirmation 54 is now given to the elector, who agrees, of course. That affirmation is circled on the poll card. The elector asks the elector is initial in it now. All right. She then hands her the poll card and asks her to go to the deputy presiding officer who will issue it her a ballot paper. Line elector enters the polling station with her companion, proceeds to the red line poll clerk. The companion gives the poll card and ID card to the red line poll card. She searches for the elector's name on the list, found it, issues 
the consecutive number to the elector which she records on the list. She, she then alerts the PO, presiding officer, who goes over to assist. The companion is now required to do two declarations, declaration of secrecy and declaration of the companion. She is indicating to the companion that he has to sign those two documents. Now proceeds to administer an affirmation to the elector. Affirmation to the elector, number 58, form 58. The companion is also asked to sign the poll card. ID and poll card is returned to the companion, who now goes to the desk of the deputy presiding officer. The blind elector and her companion proceed to the table of the deputy presiding officer. The companion hands over the ID and poll card, the officer assures that the elector is the one in front of her. She initials the poll card, gives it back to the companion. She then proceeds to demonstrate how to mark the X using the guidance ballot, as well as how to fold the ballot after having marked it in the voting booth. She now asks the elector to show her her fingers. So she's examining the fingers for electoral ink stain. There is none. So she proceeds to issue a ballot paper to the elector. She will then put her initials at the back, creases and detaches the ballot paper, hands it to the companion. She has asked that her cell phone be placed in the receptacle. The elector and her companion goes to the voting booth. The letter proceeds to the table of the officer in charge of the ballot box. The companion gives to the officer poll card and ID card. The officer asks the elector to show the initials of the ballot. The assistance is coming from the companion with respect to that. informing the elector to immerse her right index finger into the ink, giving her tissue to for the residue. The elector is assisted by her companion to drop the ballot into the box. And they are being thankful for this. The officer proceeds now Indicate from the poll card the consecutive number on her list. She's drawing a line in red, writing V against name, indicating on the poll card that the, the elector has voted. She now proceeds to insert the poll card into the poll card box. The elector has left. And the presiding officer is using 
the affirmation and declarations done by the companion making an entry in the polling station diary. Gentleman attempts to come to the polling station. The presiding officer sees him and walks to render some assistance. She asks him what is his purpose of being there. He said he's a polling agent. She's asking him for his declaration of secrecy and letter of appointment. He hands over both documents. She, she's okay with them. She continues to let him know, advise him that the documents will be held by her or retained by her during the course of the day. However, if he wants to leave, he may do so, but should he desire to witness the count he, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he is not to leave the polling station. She shows him a seat, which is comfortable. She then places the documents in the relevant envelopes. The letter of appointment, E20, Declaration of Secrecy, E24.